It is now time for new products. Are you ready? Code's particle. Okay. All right. <laughs> New products, here we go. We're gonna new, go through new, these. New, 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 Okay, so um, first up, yeah, this is an SD card with? Jesse. On it, that's This right. is the Raspbian and Jesse uh, 8 gig SD card. Um, Raspbian and Jesse is, is the latest stable release. It's, um, it's, because it's on the Pi, the Pi 2 can finally basically run Jesse. It has enough stuff on it to, to be able to handle it. It's like the, the ARM core can do it. And Jesse is stable. Uh, it does have system D, but um, in exchange, you get to use a huge amount of software that's available for um, Raspbian. I know that there was a couple of like OpenGL things that were not, or OpenCV things that were not available. Uh, we get to compile them by hand for Wheezy, whereas for Jesse, they're a package because you get uh, access to this entire package database. Um, it does require an 8 gig card. You can no longer run Jesse on a 4 gig card. It's huge and also boots straight to desktop. But this is the future. We're still going to sell uh, Wheezy cards, but the, the end game here is it's going to be all Jesse probably within the next six to eight months. OK. All right, next up. Um, this is our. This is a Pi. This is yeah. a Pi Bow, Pi TFT case from Pi, Pi Maroni. Yeah, it's our <laughs> for Pi. Yeah, it's our Pi TFT inside of a Pi Maroni Pi case. Pi, Pi Bow Pi case. Yeah. The Raspberry Pi. This is showing our capacitive screen. Um, if you have one of our Pi TFT pluses, uh, and you want to use it with a Pi Two or Pi B plus, um, and you're you know the, they had a case before, but they didn't have um, the you know slots for the the uh, the USB ports, and it didn't have the right layout and whatever for the Pi B plus or Pi 2, well, this version does. So if you have a Pi 1, get the old version. If you have Pi 2, get this version. works yeah. both with resistive yeah. and capacitive. Yeah, just show it off. It's made out of multiple layers of uh, blue acrylic. It's an Adafruit blue. It's really sweet. And yeah, you can use the touch screen. And then the buttons are exposed here. So you can press the buttons for action. And there's these little um, four screws that act as little um, toppers. You get access to all the ports. It's just like a Pi bow. And there's also a topper for the three and a half inch display. So if you're using the 2.8 inch or the 3.5 inch, uh, you just swap out whichever one. OK. And if you're subscribed to the uh, Maker Business newsletter, you saw that we posted about Pi Maroni is now selling a stake of the company on a site. So they're taking investment, yes. and they also posted up some of their sales stats. So if you're a maker business, you're always curious about, wow, Pi Maroni seems really popular. You can get a uh, Yeah, what's a their view. profit margins? How many, yeah. how many of each product do they sell? And, and you know, which ones are they working on? What are, the, what are their plans? Yeah, that's pretty cool. And if you can invest in them. If I was in England, I would probably uh, try to invest. I'm not. It, it's a British only or UK only yeah. site. But check it out uh, for the PiMaroni.com slash invest also okay. for more details. Well, as I'll just totally pitch them. Why not? Yeah. Let's do this thing. Yeah, whatever. Okay. Um, All so, right, now. Yeah, so we have particle stuff going on. So yes. this is the code. This is the night. This, this is, is the it. big announcement. Adafruit.com slash particle. This is it. This is it. This we is are it. shipping particles. Particles. So what is the particle, Lady Ada? That's an excellent question. I'm going to tell you over this rotating GIF of a particle without headers. So particle was previously known as spark.io. Uh, and they've, they've adapted, they've pivoted their name to Particle, and they made the Spark Core, which is kind of an all-in-one STM32 processor plus, at the time, it was a CC3000 Wi-Fi module. This was when the CC3000 came out. It was the first, like, $10 Wi-Fi module. Uh, up till then, it was always 25 bucks per Wi-Fi module. And so they were able to finally make something for $40 that was a Wi-Fi, internet-connected, cloud-based microcontroller. You program it over the cloud. There's basically an IDE that you run in a web browser, and then it downloads itself over Wi-Fi uh, to the, the Spark core or the um, Particle core, as it's now called. And so that was pretty good, and that worked out kind of well. And then uh, they probably had the same experience I had with the CC3000. It's, it's a little uh, creaky, and also it doesn't support SSL. And as everybody knows, security is very important on the internet. You want to make sure nobody can see what you're doing with Internet of Things. Nobody can, can hack your Internet of Things devices. And so they wanted to uh, change uh, platforms over to something that could support SSL, as well as have a lot more space and be it faster and do N, uh, 802.11n, and, and a lot of other stuff that comes with having a, a better Wi-Fi chip. And so the next generation of chip is the Broadcom Wicked chipset. And the little silver square in the middle there is, is basically a Broadcom Wicked chip. It's like the BCM4336288 or something, um, which is a really powerful Wi-Fi chip that, that can do a lot. And they paired it with an STM32F3 
uh, processor, which is, an, uh, which is a Cortex M3 processor. Um, it's all in that little silver box uh, in the middle there, and it can basically, like I said, you can program it over the internet. It uses Arduino-like programming language. You deploy to it uh, remotely. You can, you can upload code anywhere in the world. Um, it can do secure connections. It's very inexpensive. It's under $20. And that's basically what the particle uh, uh, core and then now um, the particle... Uh, yeah, so we have a few flavors here. Uh, photon. Yeah, Sorry, so the photon just, is. Yeah, I'm just going to go through these uh, photos that we have here. Right, so this is the particle photon. This is the one with the wicked chipset. This is the new one. And we've got two versions. We've got one with header and without. You can see the one without, which also has castellated pads. You can sell it onto a PCB, as well as the more popular one with headers. Uh, we yeah. also have a mini uh, basic kit, which is here. It comes with a lovely sticker, a breadboard, the photon with headers, a micro, uh, micro USB cable, so you can get plugged in and program um, start uh, powered easily. Uh, with two resistors, LED, a photo cell, and this is it on the breadboard, and you can wire it up and basically make your own, you know, connect it to something like Adafruit IO, so like, you know, when the light changes, it can detect it, and then you can also turn on and off the LED remotely. It's a, it's a very good Internet of Things demo project. So it's really adorable. It's kind of like a little Arduino with Wi-Fi built in, breadboard friendly. But let's say you want to use Arduino Shields. Um, so not all Arduino libraries are ported, but you know many are. And if you have something that's Ar Arduino Shield shaped, you can use this Shield Shield, which I can show on the overhead because I kind of have a thing going on here. So this is the Shield Shield. I'll zoom in. And so yeah, this is the uh, particle photon, and this plugs in so neatly over here, and it takes this compact small shape and it makes it into a big shape. So for example, you wanted to have data logging, you could connect the, our data logging with a real-time clock shield onto this, and then you would uh, you know, port the I squared C and SPI code to support it. I think SD cards probably already supported, and most real-time clocks probably are as well. So you just have to put together the particle libraries to make this work, which is mechanically makes it fit, also has level shifting and a um, power adapter. So that's one of the fine accessories for Particle. OK. And we also have a few other things that go into the Particle family. So yes. all this is at adafruit.com slash Particle. And we also have the Maker Kit. Yeah, the Maker Kit. So this is like, this is if you're like, OK, I really want to do everything. This is like 90 bucks. Um, but it comes with a ton of stuff. You've got, I mean, we just laid it out, and like there's capacitors, there's resistors, there's diodes, there's buttons, there's buzzers, there's uh, PIR photo uh, cells, there's photo cells, there's servos, there's an OLED, there's pentameters, there's wires, there's header, there's a battery pack, there's multiple temperature sensors, like I'm probably even missing something. There's a vibrator buzzer, there's a relay, there's two switches. Anyways, it's kind of like everything, and it comes in a lovely little box um, and you're pretty much ready to rock and like you know it's 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 got everything you want to do to have an internet connected project like for example here's a demo uh, it shows a PIR sensor and an LED so and this is battery powered so maybe detect when somebody walks into a room or walks past this um, connects to the internet tells you know sends an email or or updates a website you can also use an LED to to indicate something back so it's very powerful um, it is Online only programming, so it's just something you have to watch for. Like it's it's not something you you can kind of sort of maybe program it on a local computer, but it's not really designed for it. It's really designed for online compiling and deployment. Um, for some people, that's great. You don't have to worry about installing any software. You just open up your web browser and you're ready to rock. It is very very fast to program. It only takes about like 10 20 seconds. It's much faster than you might imagine it would be over the internet. It's actually it's not it's not like a modem. It's it's over Wi-Fi. It's quite fast. And um, it's very fun and easy, and it's, it's a great way to get started. And, and I think it definitely will support supports MQTT. You can use it with Adafruit I.O. or okay. any other broker. And then one last mm -hmm. product that we're stocking and selling, this is the internet button. Yeah, this is sort of like this fun accessory for the Photon. We have our, our LED uh, NeoPixel ring, but this is kind of an interactive all-in-one demo project. Um, this uh, fits into this tin here and hold on let's take this out so this internet button it's kind of fascinating let me show you the overhead because it's, it's a little confusing if you don't see it physically so the the uh, photon plugs into here and there's a there's a nice little uh, topper that goes in it and this fits inside of 
a tin, or it doesn't even have to fit inside of a tin, it can fit inside of anything, and it clicks because there's these um, actuators on the bottom, and there's also a beeper, and there's also a ring of NeoPixels, which I can't get to because I have to take this out. But basically, there's a bunch of NeoPixels underneath here. So basically, it's a, it's a four-directional button with also LEDs on the outside. So basically, a demo if you want to show an interactive thing like DIY Nest, for example. You, know, you could click it to change your lights, left, right, up, down, maybe change music and have the lights uh, indicate, you know, oh, the, the music's high or we're changing stations or changing the temperature or you know, notifying. <clears throat> So it's, it's kind of an all-in-one, like, ready-to-go, pre-assembled, like, you're ready to rock, has some demos that goes with it. Uh, it's just more for people who don't want to do the breadboarding of the maker kit or the basic kit. They want to just kind of immediately get started with a project. Okay. And then last up tonight, um, besides Particle, um, which is the star of the show, the other star of the show, besides you, is going to be the Ada Logger. Data logger. Yeah, it sounds like data logger because it's kind of like a data logger. It's the data logger. You get full credit for coming up with this name. This is a great name because we were thinking what's a good name for it, the yeah. data logger, but it's more fun than just saying data logger. You said data logger. It's I'm the like, feather data logger. It's like, yes. So this is the feather data logger. So this is the second in our feather family. And for viewers of the show, you're going to get real used to talking about feathers because we got a lot more coming out. We're going to try to get out one a week. Um, this version has an Atmega 32U4 in it, with, running at 8 megahertz at 3.3 volt logic. It has the same exact pinouts as the basic proto feather, um, but this one, instead of having a little prototyping area, it has a micro SD card, which makes it perfect for data logging or data retrieval. Um, and it kind of fits perfectly onto a breadboard. And one of the cool things about Feather is not only is it pin compatible, but it has battery charging built in. You can also monitor the battery voltage. Um, we also stuck an extra, we had a little bit of more space, so we stuck an LED on it. Let me show it on the overhead. I can, I can show and com compare and contrast. So this is the Ada Logger. So this is the basic proto that we showed off um, last week. Zoom a little bit. And it has that same uh, micro USB, uh, JST for battery, at Mega 324 prototyping area. But you know, for this version, we're like, okay, instead of prototyping area, let's stick on a green LED and a micro SD card. So you can basically use any SD or SDHC um, SD card, any size will work just fine. Um, and then you can use the SD library, um, the Arduino ID, for example, to talk to it, use the hardware SPI pins and a bunch of things that aren't exposed. So you don't have to worry about any conflict with those. Um, yeah, and you want to make it portable, just unplug the micro USB and it runs just fine off of a little LiPo battery. When you have the micro USB plugged in, it changes over and starts charging. But then when you unplug it, it automatically just switches over to LiPo without, without stopping. So it's, it's kind of handy if you want to make projects portable. And then um, we're going to have more feathers and then you know we're going to have a, a whole system of add-ons uh, called wings that will plug it on top to add more capabilities. So for example, you could add a GPS wing onto this. Let me see if I can find that one. Yes, for example, let's say we'd have a GPS wing. You would plug this in on top using female headers, and then now you have a, a GPS data logger ready to rock. Or you could plug in a you know, cellular module or, or Wi-Fi or, or Bluetooth, all this stuff that uh, will be coming out for the Feather family. So it's very exciting. I can't wait to show you more feathers. But that's the Feather of the Week. OK. Yeah, we'll have to do a new segment. All right. <laughs> OK, and with that, that's new products.